Hmm. Blu-rays. 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 Blu-rays! Hey there guys, Jack Drees here. It's been a, it's been a while. It's been over a year actually since I last did my June 2019 Blu-ray collection update. I've been doing a lot of unboxings recently because, well, with the coronavirus, I cannot go out and buy Blu-rays. Not that I've done Blu-ray hunting series stuff to begin with, but I don't know. I just figured I'd do something other than elevator content for a little bit. Not that I don't like that stuff. I just, given how there's a pandemic, I cannot really go outside and film elevators. For those of you who are elevator fans watching, welcome to the other side of me. And for all you unknown viewers, hello to you as well. And same to you loyal followers who subscribed to me for that one Blu-ray collection video and never got anything since. I'm pumped. Let's get this started. So, I just want to go over a couple things before we start diving into the collection. One, this is not in any particular order. Although I will say that I will be going over the special editions first. Although, if it comes to alphabetical order, that is not a thing in my collection. All right, just move my camera. I'm just testing things out to see how things work, and we'll see. Well, this, maybe this will be the frame for the rest of the video. So, again, this is today is June fifteenth. I believe, it, yeah, June fifteenth, two thousand twenty. Day fifteen, give it up for day fifteen. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. All right, now let's dive into the collection, starting with special editions, and we're going to start with this. Limited edition of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I pre-ordered this on BestBuy.com, although they did have a Best Buy exclusive steelbook for this movie, even though I didn't buy it, I decided to get this one, and I think it was one of the better purchases I made. This thing is still in the wrap, but it does come with a lot. Uh, it comes with a vinyl record, as you can see on the back right here. Uh, it's bonus features as usual. What else? Yeah, it also comes with posters. Those fake movies that Leonardo DiCaprio's character did. Starting off with my Marvel Cinematic Universe Steelbook Collection, Iron Man. Iron Man is the first entry to the MCU, and if this movie sucked, we wouldn't have the MCU where it is today. This thing's still in the wrap, it's a Best Buy exclusive, and it's 4K. Probably unwrap it sometime soon. Although this next movie, Iron Man 3, is unwrapped. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so you got the disc right here. Look at that, you got Iron Man sitting down. Kind of like in the movie. Up next we have Spider-Man Far From Home, a Sony film. According to Richard Roper on the back from Chicago Sun-Times, this is wildly entertaining. See all the webby stuff on the inside, it just took out one of the discs. Up next is Hobbs and Shaw, the Fast and Furious movie. Although I will say I do have other Fast and Furious movies, but they're all on DVD. Except for... Fate of the Furious, which I don't have in any format, although I did see that movie and I enjoyed it. I will say this is one of the better movies in the franchise, and this is just ridiculous fun. I will say the director, David Leach, did a really, really good job with it. I think some of it's kind of bland, but at the same time, it's also kind of stylistic. It has its own touches to it. I like it. Up next... Back to the Future, the trilogy. I just rewatched this recently. Very fun movies, very fun trilogy. I will say the first one's the best, although if I had to give my official ranking, they're all great, but one, three, two, from best to worst. They're all great, though, once again. Secret Life of Walter Mitty, this is a Target exclusive. Speaking of exclusives, Best Buy exclusive of Charlie's Angels, the 2000 edition, I believe. Was it 2000? Yeah, 2000, with Karen Diaz, Lucy Liu. Up next is Zombieland Double Tap. This is still in the wrap, but it's a Best Buy exclusive. I also have Zombieland 1, but it is somewhere else. Up next is the only Terminator movie I have, Terminator Dark Fate, although I did enjoy the other Terminator films, more specifically 1, 2, and 3. The other two, 4 and 5, are eh, not so good. I mean, 5 is okay, but... I don't like 4. I think it's super boring. Halloween, the uh, FYE exclusive steelbook. Uh, Michael Myers on the front. Halloween 2, the Scream Factory edition. 
Speaking of F FYE Steelbooks, or more specifically the FYE Steelbook I showed two cases ago, we have the FYE's, FYE exclusive for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Very nice looking steelbook indeed. Hacksaw Ridge, this is still in the wrap. I got this at Best Buy, but I think this is an exclusive somewhere else. I think Target or something. I'm not sure. Up next, speaking of steelbooks, we have A Quiet Place. I got this for a dollar, because it was huge to FYE. For those of you who are not aware, you can tell from the sticker right up here. That's the FYE thing. And speaking of steelbooks I got at FYE, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. FYE has an exclusive steelbook for this, but I got this one. Doesn't matter. I enjoy the movie regardless. I think it's one of the five, well, maybe five or six best movies of the 2010s. Up next we have Stripes. I believe this is the first movie that I showed in my previous Blu-ray collection update. I haven't watched it though. They live... I came here to chew bubblegum and kick gas and I'm all out of bubblegum. Boys in the Hood. Got the cover art right here. Lawless with Jessica Chastain and other people. I'm trying to read this. Shia LaBeouf, Tom Hardy, Gary Oldman. Yeah, I'm just reading off the cover at this point. Maya Wasikowska, Jessica Chastain, and Guy Pierce. The Iron Giant, also an FYE exclusive steelbook, as you can. Well, there's no logo proving it, but I did get it at New York Comic Con and at the FYE booth, and it is an FYE, FYE exclusive if you look online. Wreck It Ralph. The Best Buy exclusive steelbook. They also have a Best Buy exclusive for Ralph Breaks the Internet, but I have not gotten that. Maybe the price goes down. I think it was down at one point. I think it was like fifteen, twenty, ten dollars at one point. They had like a special sale, but I don't think I got anything Disney steelbook related. Deadpool two. This is an autographed steelbook. As I showed last time, this the cover is a little damaged, but. This is autographed by the guy who played Colossus and the girl who played Vanessa in this movie. Another steelbook still in the wrap. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Another Best Buy exclusive. This looks pretty... This looks pretty creepy. Look at it. Remember, this was based on a book. I have not read the book, though. Moving on to my Pixar Special Edition collection. We have Incredibles 2. This is the Target exclusive. And it comes with a 4K. Remember, I got this in my Black Friday video from this past year. See the inside? Shows all the characters. I don't want to ruin this. There's all the disc art. Very nice. I have not watched this at home yet, but I have seen in the theater, and as the cover says, it was worth the wait. It really was. Up next, Finding Dory. This is a Target exclusive, although I got it at FYE. I actually like this better than Finding Nemo, I'm not going to lie. If anything, I think Finding Nemo, well, I haven't seen all of Brave yet, is my least favorite of the Pixar movies. By the way, I do not own it. But Finding Dory, I saw it in the theater. I, I connected emotionally to it. I think the way they handled Dory's character was very well done. Inside Out, one of my favorite Pixar movies, and one of my favorite animated movies as well. This, I watched this a few months back recently. Oh, the ending gets me. I, like, I never cry during movies. If I turn this on again, I'm probably going to cry. Who knows? Just like The Good Dinosaur, this one's in the wrap, and unfortunately, it's a little bit damaged if you look at this. Look at that, it's tilting up. I don't want to too much to it. It's going to make a sound effect. Oh, now it does it. Watch this. Yeah. If you heard that sound, that's probably not good. Although it is still in the wrap. Speaking of collectibles, The Incredibles. This is a Best Buy exclusive, and this came out before many of the 4K Best Buy exclusive steelbooks for Pixar movies. Most likely in promotion for Incredibles 2. Toy Story, the original, I will say that when it comes to Toy Story, this is probably my 
it's actually hard to rank the Toy Story movies because the first three are so good. Four is like DLC. Like, I mean, it's really good, but it's also the worst one. One, two, and three are almost tied for the best movie in the franchise. I, I almost argue that Toy Story is the best franchise out there in terms of quality, if you ask me. Dr. Strangelove, I just saw this movie the other month, February. Sorry, I hate it. That's all I'll say. Okay, well, I, I don't hate it. Let me just start off by saying that. It's a 6 out of 10. I will say there are positive things about it. But, I don't know. There's just something about it that just didn't click with me. I like the style they presented it. And which they presented it, but... I don't know. There was something about it that just didn't stick with me. I mean, I like Kubrick. I mean, 2001 is one of my, one of my favorite movies. I just... Dr. Strangelove didn't hit me. Speaking of... And speed of which, we got Spartacus, still in the wrap, FYE, uh, from what you can tell, although I believe that is a Best Buy exclusive. Easy Rider, that's another steelbook, as you can see right here. Another steelbook still in the wrap, The Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's a good movie. Mission Impossible Fallout, one of the best action movies ever made. I know a lot of people talk about Theory Road being the best action movie of the 2010s, I would argue, actually, I'm not sure if it is, um, but Fallout is definitely up there if it's not the best action movie of the 2010s. Tom Cruise is a freaking madman. Desperado. I have not seen this movie, although I had this I had this deal book for a little bit. Maybe I'll check it out at some point. Red Sparrow, otherwise known as the movie that MoviePass did not want to... Let anybody see if they use their site, use their app. Ready Player One. This is a movie that I was really looking forward to. And once I left the theater, I was not disappointed. Oh, and by the way, look at this. Lenticular. Target exclusive also, if you can see the label right here. I think it was one of the more underappreciated movies of the past decade. I'm not sure where the guy who played Wade Watts is going to be going in terms of his career, but I think it's one of Spielberg's uh, best best films, if you ask me. I mean, I have not seen all of them. I'm going to be watching Minority Report pretty soon because I'm doing a Tom Cruise month on my blog, but when it comes to Steven Spielberg and what I've seen from him, that did not disappoint me whatsoever. Up next is Chappie. Chappie good. Chappie life. I've not seen this movie and I still know that line. From, probably from ads and stuff like that. And from other YouTube users. Although I really want to check it out. It Follows. Another steelbook. Very nice cover art. I really like it. Top Gun. Right away is June 2020. In another, in another timeline, we'd actually be seeing Top Gun 2. Unfortunately, that's not a reality anymore because of COVID. So it's kind of depressing to talk about this movie right now. But unfortunately, we have to. Although I will say, I do plan on maybe buying the 4K pretty soon. I'm not sure. I don't know. I dig Tom Cruise. Jim Henson's Labyrinth. A digibook. Still in the wrap, but here we have The Wolf of Wall Street. I believe this is a Target slash Walmart exclusive when it came out. Up next we have The Hunt for Red October. We have the Spider-Man Sam Raimi trilogy on Blu-ray. It also includes the Spider-Man 3 editor's cut and Spider-Man 2.1, the extended cut of Spider-Man 2. Which, by the way, I think is better than the original. We also have the Dark Knight Trilogy, which includes... I showed this last time, and I'll show it again. This is a limited edition gift set. This also includes the art and making of the Dark Knight Trilogy. By the way, the Dark Knight, uh, of those three movies, I think the Dark Knight is the best one. Then I rank it from... That and Batman Begins and The Dark Knight Rises, although I am sort of cheating because it has been years since I've seen The Dark Knight Rises. Well, then again, it's been years since I've seen The Dark Knight as well, so I probably need to rewatch that trilogy again. Okay, let's move on to other Blu rays. We'll stack these together right here. Now, this is one of my most recent pickups Arkansas. I've not seen this movie yet, although it was supposed to come out as South by Southwest this year. Unfortunately, that's not the case anymore because. That was another victim of COVID. Up next is Toy Story 2. This is the uh, Blu-ray edition from 2010. And 
yeah, it's a special edition. So there you go. I remember they redid this recently, or more specifically, just altered it slightly because there was one scene that they took out of the Blu-ray that, well, keeping with the times, you just can't have it because it's making fun of the casting couch. That reminds me, we're back in the Pixar collection again. Up next, we have Coco. I'll be honest, this was pretty disappointing. I like the movie, I just don't think I liked it as much as other people. Cars 3. I actually like this movie better than I thought I would. Then again, I'm a sucker for... Well, Cars was actually my first movie theater experience, so maybe that's why I like it so much. The Lion King. Really good movie. Aladdin, the original. Oz the Great and Powerful, which I almost argue is better than The Wizard of Oz. The Jungle Book, the remake. I have not. I do not have the original Hercules, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson version. It also comes with an extended cut. Brightburn, directed by... Oh, don't fall. Uh, I was going to say directed by James Gunn, but it's actually directed by David Yar... Uh, Yaros... Uh, Yarosky. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm motioning your name, but it was also written by Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn, who are related to James Gunn, who produced this movie. By the way, James Gunn, great director. We have Us, uh, directed by Jordan Peele. And speaking of Jordan Peele, we also have Get Out. Or as Arnold Schwarzenegger would call it on his daily life, GET OUT! He's on this movie, but I don't care. I wanted to do that. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the regular 4K edition. I have this because I don't feel guilty of unwrapping it. Still got the discs in here. I like these discs. Up next we have The Hateful Eight. I'll be honest, that's probably my least favorite of the Tarantino movies I've seen so far. I still have to see Jackie Brown, I still have to see Inglorious Bastards, I still have to see uh, Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2, but of the ones I've seen, Hateful Eight honestly takes the cake as the big loser. Django Unchained, I like this movie, personally. One of the better Tarantino flicks. Kill Bill Volume 1, Volume 2, we just talked about this, so we need to see it. Pulp Fiction, also, by the way, autographed by Phil Lamar, who was in the movie. Also might know him from his roles in animated titles, like Family Guy, and I think, it was, I think he played Green Lantern at one point. Reservoir Dogs, Tarantino's, I believe that was his directorial debut for a feature. By the way, the 15th Anniversary Edition. Get that there. Let's move on to this stack next. You can barely see in the frame. <laughs> okay. Just, just something right here. Okay. So. It's day two. As you can see, I'm wearing different clothes. It's day two of the Blu-ray collection update because I ran out of memory on the first day. I'm using a different camera. So, let's continue. I started this collection last time and then I realized my camera was out of memory. So, let's go. Moondock Saints. We're starting my Boston collection. Good Will Hunting. I did see this movie. I watched it in school. I have not watched this Blu-ray yet, but I have seen the DVD in school. We have The Departed. The Town, directed by Ben Affleck. Gone Baby Gone. Spotlight, one best picture. Jason Bourne, The Bourne Supremacy. And I just dropped that one. The Bourne Identity. By the way, I have Bourne Legacy and Bourne's Ultimatum, but they're on DVD. Castaway, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Speaking of Robert Zemeckis, we're getting to that part of the collection now. Flight. Although we did just go over Back to the Future, so we are already uh, deep into that. Allied. This is my 4K from Robert Zemeckis. The one 4K I have from him, I believe. Alien Covenant. Prometheus. Kind of damaged. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know how that happened. AVP. Uh, yeah, AVP Requiem. Just wanted to make sure I had the right one. Speaking of AVP, this is just Alien vs. Predator. Alien Quadrilogy comes with Alien, Alien 2, Alien 3, Alien 4. Predator, the first one. I don't have any others. Let's count Alien vs. Predator, which we just talked about. 
The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford. Really good movie. Speaking of Harrison Ford, we got Air Force One. Get off my plane! The Hurt Locker, directed by Catherine Bigelow. I've not seen this movie, but I like her as a director. I like I watch Point Break at least once a year, which will be a part of the collection we'll be going to eventually. Speaking of Catherine Bigelow, we also have Zero Dark Thirty. Jessica Chastain is really good in this movie. I recommend it. Transporter Refueled, otherwise known as Transporter 4. Transporter 3. From That's the only one of these from Lionsgate, from what I can tell. Transporter 2. I like this better than the first one. And speaking of the first one, we have the first one right here. Transporter. Or THE Transporter, I should say. The Equalizer 2, starring Genzel... Did I just say Den Denzel? Denzel Washington. Speaking of which, we have the Equalizer 1 right here. Ted. Directed by Seth MacFarlane. Ted 2. I like Ted 1 better, if you ask me, but I also really enjoy Ted 2. Mission Possible Rogue Nation. Really good movie. I think it's the second best in the Mission Possible franchise. Speaking of Mission Possible, we have Mission Possible 1 through 4. And all in one collection. This one, I'm not sure you can see this. The Social Network. Let's actually get this out of here. A bunch of images on the back. Nice little cover art right here. Here's the inside. It's all black. Alright, we have a Legends 2-pack. It has Chaos and the Bank job. And speaking of which, we also have another Legends 2-pack. Crank and Crank 2. High Voltage. It's a great interview with John Campia uh, for Crank 1. I did not see the movie, but go watch it. Jason Statham with John Campia. Need for Speed. Looper, directed by Ryan Johnson. Argo. I think that was, yeah, one best picture. Although, yeah, it's a really good movie. I don't know if it... Yeah, 2012 was not that great of a year, um, great of a year for film for me, but... We'll say Argo was really good, and I can see why one best picture, but it probably would not have been my pick. The Watch. Ouija and Ouija 2, aka Ouija Origin of Evil. I've only seen the first one, and it's not good. Goodfellas on 4K. The Peanut Butter Falcon, starring Shia LaBeouf. What's the first rule? Party! Alright, and we got Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I wish I had the original Jumanji, but unfortunately I don't. Although I will say I did see Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and I do recommend it. Let's go on to Waterworld in 4K. This movie, you're going to see this again in the video, believe it or not. Phantom Thread on 4K, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. The Master, Inherent Vice. This is my Paul Thomas Anderson select collection. Kubo and the Two Strings. Love this movie. I think Laika is a studio that I need to look into more. Okay, well, I've seen three of their films. I need to still see Paranorman, and I still need to see... Uh, what was it? Was the one they did? Box Trolls! That's the one! Box Trolls! I still need to say that. But I did see Coraline, Kubo and the Two Strings, and the next movie I'm about to show you, Missing Link. Really good movie. Sorry, Zach Galvaganakis. I'm not sure if I said his name wrong, but still. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with Marilyn Monroe. Why him? Green Lantern, otherwise known as the movie that Ryan Reynolds would probably bust your butt just for having. Or watching, even. The Farewell, really good movie. I recommend it. Don John, another really good movie. I recommend that. I think... I mean, I'm not a big fan of rom-coms, but that's a good movie. That's a really good movie. Focus with Will Smith and Margot Robbie. That's from my grandparents, but I haven't seen it yet. Act of Valor, Snowpiercer, this is one of my most recent pickups, directed by Bong Joon-ho. And speaking of which, the movie that everybody's been talking about, Parasite, it's free on Hulu right now, but I got the Blu-ray before that even happened. I heard, her, I think they're coming out with a criterion for it. I, I don't know, I might drop a few bucks for it, I'm not sure. Uh, what is it? Great Gatsby, that's the one. This is Great Gatsby. Charlie St. Cloud, and The Longest Ride. That's that part. Let's move on to over here. Taken 1. Best of the Taken series. Taken 2. Uh, worst of the Taken series, if you ask me. Taken 3. 
You know where that belongs in the Taken series, in the middle. Lego Batman movie. Really fun. I think I enjoyed this most more than most people. I mean, not just as a comic book fan, but as a fan of the Lego franchise. Well, I've never been a big Lego guy, but when it comes to these Lego movies, I think they've been very imaginative. Although I still need to see Ninjago. Lego Movie 2, the second part. The Lego Movie, the original. Leon the Professional. Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. I think that's an underrated film. Lucy, not so good. Fifth Element, I enjoyed that film, personally. Jurassic World in 3D. Best of the Jurassic series. The Lost World Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park 3. I watched this movie and my TV broke while watching it. Fun fact. Jurassic World in 3D. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Cold Pursuit. Starring Liam Neeson. And speaking of Liam Neeson, we have The Commuter. We also have Non-Stop. I'm not even sure if I'm doing a good impression of him, but who cares? Look, that's way over the top. I don't even care anymore. I'm leaving it in the video. Annabelle Creation. Annabelle. The original. Or more... I mean, more specifically, it's a spin-off of The Conjuring. And speaking of The Conjuring, we have Conjuring 1 and 2. I saw the first one, and I still need to see the second one. First one's really good, by the way. Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. This is my Middle Earth section. Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. We have The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. This is the extended edition. We also have the regular edition of The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. There's the extended edition of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, my personal favorite of the Hobbit movies. Might even be my favorite of the Lord of the Rings movies as well, I'm not sure. Although Fellowship's really good. Speaking of which, we got the regular Desolation of Smaug right here. I feel your hair. I love Smaug, I'm sorry. Unexpected Journey, Hobbit Unexpected Journey. This is the extended edition as well. We got the 3D regular edition of The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. I really hope these movies come out in 4K pretty soon. I'll probably shout out some money for that. Safe, sorry, Jason Statham. Ready or Not, this is my favorite movie of 2019. I highly, highly recommend this. By the way, if you have HBO, I think it's on there right now. I think it's also on Hulu as well. So if you don't want to show $20 for the Blu-ray or $15 or whatever it is, go watch it on HBO or something like that. It's... that The ending of the movie gets me. I mean, well, not emotionally, but it's just... I didn't see it coming. That's just that's the best way I can describe it. Moving on to my Christopher Nolan section. Dunkirk. I cannot wait for Tenet. That's all I'll say. Oh, Dunkirk is a really good movie. Dunkirk is a fantastic movie. I saw in the theater an IMAX 70mm. One heck of an experience. And speaking of things I saw in IMAX 70mm, Interstellar. One of my favorite movies of all time. And I'll set about that. We have the regular version, or I say regular Blu-ray of Interstellar. I just showed the 4K. I'm going to show something I showed you last time. Let's get this out. I have a special piece of IMAX film right here. I'm not going to take it out. I can't even tell what scene this is for. Yeah, it says collectible IMAX film cell right there. From an actual centimillimeter IMAX print. But, like, I had this for five years, and I still can't even tell what scene that's from. Was it five years? Yeah, it was five years. Okay. Inception. I actually just watched this the other night. Re well, rewatched it. Because I was in the mood. And, wow, I forgot how exhilarating the climax is. Or more specifically, I watched this version of Inception, the 4K edition. It's coming back to theaters pretty soon. I'm so excited. I missed it in the theater because I was 10 years old and it was PG-13. I didn't really know much about Inception anyway. The Prestige. I think this is actually a, the 4K edition is pretty hard to find. Insomnia. I got this for 4 bucks. Used in Newberry Comics. I think this is Christopher Nolan's worst film, but saying that it's Christopher Nolan's worst film is like saying, oh, it's kind of like French fries. You can't screw that up. That's the way I can describe it. Memento, one of Christopher Nolan's better films, and the one Christopher Nolan film I have yet to see, following Criterion. I still need to watch that at some point. Also, I believe it's shortest film, Tron, the original classic, 1982. 
Tron Legacy. It's hard. I almost flip back and forth on which one I like better. I think the score in the new, newer one is better, and so are the visual effects. But then again, it's 2010. It makes a huge difference. But I think story-wise, I think the original is better in terms of plot. Although I do have to go back and watch them again just to be sure. Ride Along, starring Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. Ride Along 2. I actually like that movie, believe it or not. I know some people don't really care for it. Underworld Blood Wars. Underworld Awakening. Underworld Rise of the Lycans. Underworld Evolution. Underworld. I think it's just the unrated edition. Let me just go inside here. It only has... Oh wow, this is stuck. Oh wow, look, look what's happening here. It's stuck. There we go. Wow, oh, wow, I forgot. Oh, Sony movies. They have this nice cover art. I don't know. Uh, expanding inside. Look at this. That is nice. Yeah, it's Underworld un Unrated Extended Cut, and I don't know, that's the only version of the movie, although I have seen the regular edition of the film on Stars and Crackle. I enjoyed it. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, How to Train Your Dragon. We actually had this in my last Blu-ray collection video, but it wasn't technically mine. It is technically mine now, so that's why I'm showing it to you. Really good movie. Speaking of How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World. I don't have How to Train Your Dragon 2, by the way. This is my probably my favorite of the How to Train Your Dragon movies, because it's probably the only time I've cried in the theater. Like, that was an experience for me. Ghost in the Shell, the anime. Ghost in the Shell live action with Scarlett Johansson. Celebrity Crush. King Kong, uh, 2005. Kong Skull Island, I saw this movie, pretty fun, pretty fun. Hunger Games Catching Fire, I think it's the better Hunger Games movie of the two that I've seen, and speaking of which, Hunger Games. I still don't know why I have that movie, but I still do. Insurgent, Divergent, 22 Jump Street, 21 Jump Street. Knock, knock. Joker, it's the police, ma'am. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver. He's dead. That's probably a terrible impression. So we got a four Batman movie collection featuring Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and the dreaded Batman and Robin. That's all I'll say about that. We have a triple feature Tim Burton collection. Charlie the Chocolate Factory, Beetlejuice. I'll say that once and never talk about it again. And I'm not even looking at the other one. I'll have to look at it. Corpse Bride. That's the one. Edward Scissorhands. Starring Johnny Depp. The Great Outdoors is still in the wrap. It's a John Hughes film. He wrote that film. Speaking of John Hughes, we're getting to that part of the collection now. Breakfast Club. And Weird Science. Point Break, the remake. I want to sell this at some point. I saw it, and it looks like the most depressing soap opera slash wannabe action movie I've ever seen. A much better Point Break, the original directed by Catherine Bigelow, which I will be watching at some point this summer. Because it's kind of become my tradition. Like, you know how some people, they have that one movie that they watch every Christmas, like Polar Express, Elf, Home Alone, Die Hard. Yeah, this is me every summer. I need to watch this once to fulfill my destiny, uh, per se. Roadhouse. I just saw this on TV the other day. Oh, I've seen this on Blu-ray, too. It gets good background noise. Dirty Dancing, starring Patrick Swayze. Maze Runner Scorch Trials. The original Maze Runner. 300 Rise of an Empire. 300, the original. And speaking of Zack Snyder, we have Sucker Punch. I don't know why I almost forgot that name for a second there. Up next we have The Change Up. I don't know why I said that in that grand of a voice. With Ryan Reynolds and Jason Bateman. Eh, it's okay, I guess. Chronicle, directed by Josh, Josh Trank, aka the guy who also kind of, sort of, maybe, maybe not so much directed the Fan Forstick movie, aka Fantastic Four from 2015. The Boss, directed by Paul Feig. Wait, did he direct it? Ben Falcone. I keep getting them confused sometimes because Melissa McCarthy, but yeah, Ben Falcone. I don't know why I said Paul Feig. I have not seen this, and I don't know when I will. Wild Hogs, Blades of Glory. Turbo, Tammy, speaking of Melissa McCarthy, Isn't It Romantic, starring Rebel Wilson, not a good movie at all. Battle Los Angeles, 
and Maggie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's one of the few movies I have that stars him. I still want to get a few others, like Kindergarten Cop and stuff and that sort of thing. Spy. That's a Paul Feig movie. I don't want to screw that one up. Slumdog Millionaire. One Best Picture. I approve. Also, I'm as a millionaire fanatic, I'd like to set in the movie. I don't know if that's the comment I should be giving the movie, but I will say as a story that it's kind of it's kind of hypnotizing as it goes along. I really I really enjoyed it. Waterworld. Once again, I told you that we, that you see us again. I got two copies for Christmas. And they were both 4K. Got. Gods of Egypt, more like Gods of Awful, uh, to quote Jeremy Johns. Shawshank Redemption, this is a, I think this is a UK import, or you're some sort of European import, still in the wrap. Well, I did see the I did see the movie in school, and yeah, it's a masterpiece, that's all I'll say about it. Aloha, or like, get out of here. New Year's Eve. These are, this is basically the junk pile, as I'll call it. Replicas, another movie we do not talk about here. Alright, let's talk about some other things. Moving on. Flatliners. Flatliners. The original. I do not have the remake, nor have I seen it. The Babadook. Sister really likes that movie. Fatal Attraction. It... I do not have Chatter 2, although I did see it in the theater. Love, Simon. I heard I got a spin-off series on Hulu. Atomic Blonde. Wanted. Starring Angelina Jolie. Salt. Starring Angelina Jolie. Con Air. Seven. Gravity. Apollo 13. The Martian. Jupiter Ascending. I saw this in the theater. Had a fun time with it. Then I saw it on HBO, and it became a wreck for me. I have it on Blu-ray because it was only like five bucks, and I was like, well, okay, it will take up space. I just might as well look nice. It just looks nice on the shelf. Maybe I'll watch it again as like a tech demo if I get a new TV. Who knows? Galaxy Quest. Life. Alita Battle Angel. Really fun movie. It's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. Visually stunning as hell. Bumblebee. Transformers Dark in the Moon. I also have Transformers 1, but that's on DVD. I do not have the other Transformers movies, though. Ender's Game, Pacific Rim, 4K, First Man. I don't know why this is still in the wrap. I saw this in IMAX, and I, I freaking loved it. Annihilation, Ex Machina. Actually, you know what? Never mind. It's not my favorite 824 film. We'll probably get to that in a moment. Got the 4K Steelbook, Best Buy exclusive for Blade Runner 2049. See the front right here? I'll show you the back. Very nice looking. Blade Runner, the final cut, the original. Arrival on 4K. Sully, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Clint Eastwood. Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake. Silence of the Lambs. X-Men, it's a franchise I really need to get into at some point. X2, X-Men United, Deadpool. Anyways, going to my Marvel Cinematic Universe collection, the standard one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Uh, I just have it. It's also the, by the way, fun, fun little trivia. It's the first 4K movie that Disney has put out. Guardians of the Galaxy, the original. This is the 3D edition. Thor, a criminally underrated MCU movie. I think it's better than Ragnarok. I don't know how many people will agree with me on that. Thor The Dark World, this is probably the single worst MCU movie, even though I did watch it on ABC during the Wonderful World of Disney recently. Thor Ragnarok on 4K. Doctor Strange. Ant-Man, the original. Ant-Man the Wasp. It's fun, but lame. I don't know, it's the best way to describe it. Fun, but disposable. That's a better way, actually. Captain America Civil War. At one point, this was my favorite MCU film, and then that changed. Captain America the Winter Soldier, really fun action adventure. Captain America the First Avenger, oddly enough, even though it says Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy, the only disc I have in here, I'll show you right here, I'm going to get rid of this, is a Blu-ray. Nothing behind it. Up next we have probably the movie event of a lifetime, 
Avengers Endgame, which is falling out of this case. This is it a Target exclusive? Let's get this off. This looks really nice. Look at these. I think these are like originally character posters. Look at this. I'm almost tearing something apart. We have the discs in here. Also we have... Right here we have a look back at the MCU. I love this back cover with Thanos on it. It looks really epic. It looks really epic. But I like this next movie better. And I think some of you are going to be peeved. Avengers Infinity War. Let's look inside here. I really like this Avengers logo on the back. This was the IMAX poster, which I did have at one point, but unfortunately it ripped. I think this is a Dolby poster, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a bunch of different character stuff. Here's the inside. Also, we got a gallery book right here. Look at that. Also has this Avengers logo on the back. Really stylistic. I like it. Anyways, moving on. Avengers Age of Ultron. That's the, probably the worst Avengers movie. I have the first Avengers, by the way, but it's not on Blu-ray. Iron Man 2. Black Panther. The Incredible Hulk. Spider-Man Homecoming. V for Vendetta. And The Crow. Alright, Ice Age Continental Drift. Alright, Clerks. The 15th Anniversary Edition. That's what it says. Kenny Jack. Hey, everybody. We're all gonna get laid. <laughs> Love that line. Bulletproof. The Jerk. This is the... 1970s Best of the Decade Edition. The Big Lebowski, Anchorman 2. I do have Anchorman 1, but it's on DVD. And my Will Ferrell collection here. Talladega Nights, or the Ballad, uh, or the Ballad of Ricky Bobby. Step Brothers, with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. Hot Tub Time Machine. Oh, I guess I skipped one. I guess I had a bridge in the gap in the Will Ferrell collection, because I have the campaign up next. Horrible Bosses, starring the, uh, okay, I was going to say, starring Jason Bateman, and uh, featuring the creep known as Kevin Spacey. Although he is, although I will admit the movie is pretty funny regardless. Due Date, okay movie I guess. Game Night, Fist Fight, Hall Pass, the extended cut, although it has the original in here as well. This Means War, not a good movie at all. Zombieland. Starring Woody Harrelson, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, I already went over Zombieland 2 as a steelbook. I just had the standard edition waiting. Drillbit Taylor. I have not seen this movie. National Security with Martin Lawrence. Night at the Museum. Highly recommend this, personally. Although it is a movie I grew up with, so I am a little biased. Uh, same director, The Internship. This, unfortunately, does not have the Blu-ray disc inside. It just has the DVD disc right here. Zoolander. I think this is honestly a little bit overrated. The Heat, I believe I got this at a church sale. It's by Dump Me. Got that on Black Friday at Best Buy 2018. Dirty Grandpa. Should almost put that in the junk pile. Million Ways to Die in the West. I think that is a criminally underrated film. I was actually just at Universal, the uh, last day before they did the coronavirus shutdown, and they were playing the mustache song from A Million Ways to Die in the West, and I always wanted to dance. <laughs> I was just going up the escalator, I was like, oh yes, I Universal movie, this song, I love it. Better Off Dead, starring John Cusack. Speaking of which, Easy A, and I say speaking of which because they do mention John Cusack as a somewhat critical element of that movie. Say Anything, which was also a critical element of ECA. Porky's. Revenge of the Nerds. Love this movie. I cannot even tell you how much I love it. I think it's one of my favorite comedies of all time. American Pie 1 through 4. It's American Pie, American Pie 2, American Wedding, and American Reunion. Blockers. Another underrated film, another underappreciated film. I think. I think Kay Cannon, who directed this movie, has a bright future ahead of her. I want to see more from her. I wonder what she would do with a comic book movie. Rocky. I have not seen this, unfortunately. Race. American Graffiti. Directed by George Lucas. 
Super 8, J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg's collaboration, Welcome to the Punch, I The Man with the Iron Fists, The Great Wall, or like the Bad Wall, terrible joke, The Green Zone, or just Green Zone, doesn't even need a button there, The Monuments Men, Elysium, yeah, that's the Matt Damon part of the collection, The Hurricane Heist, rather be in a hurricane and watch that movie again, Kingsman The Secret Service, I think this movie has one of my favorite action scenes ever, which, if you don't know, is the church shootout. Machete. I really like this slick cover. Look at that. Look at how. I don't know. I guess I can call. I'm going to say orange. I guess I can also say brown. And red, too. I don't even know how to describe it. Limitless. Broken City. The Gambler. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. I had the first one as well, but it's on DVD. Ryan Gosling's Drive. Hereditary. This is one of my recent pickups. Don't swear at me, you little language. Under the Skin, The Disaster Artist. This is probably my favorite A24 film. Actually, my second favorite. Why well, I get that confused? Yeah, this is my second favorite A24 film and one of my favorite comedies of the past decade, not to mention of all time. By the way, I have seen The Room, which this film is, uh, it goes over the making of The Room. And. You don't need to see The Room to appreciate this movie, but I will say both are worth your time. Speaking of which, Room. Not The Room, but Room. This is my favorite, I think it is my favorite A24 film of the ones they put out. Jacob Tremblay's performance is incredible. Although Brie Larson, I think she won Best Actress. She did a great job here too. Selma, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, going to the Westerns. And those sorts of vibey movies, I guess you can call it. Heller Highwater, 310 to Yuma, with Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. Unforgiven, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, The Shape of Water, One Best Picture at the 90th Annual Academy Awards. Really good movie. Fight Club, Belle and Louise. I just watched this for the first time recently. Really good movie. I like the chemistry between Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Black Swan. That's a good movie. I like the I like the lighting and the cinematography in that film. Oh, I like the also like the performances between Mila Kunis and Natalie Portman. Birdman. I seriously want to know how they pulled that movie off. Like, what god gave them magical powers to do that movie? Seriously, that's a fantastic movie, and like one of the best technical achievements in the past decade. Sorry to bother you. Hunter Killer. The Debt. Captain Phillips. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Jumper. Starring Hayden Christensen. Nightcrawler. Steady Hands. No Country for Old Men. This is one of those movies that barely even has a soundtrack and it still manages to work. Titanic. I'm the king of the world. Nerve. Actually, a it's a better movie than I probably would, would have thought it was, like, like maybe eight months before I saw it. Pompeii, Ghostbusters, The Sixth Sense, Dances with Wolves, the 20th Anniversary Edition, Gangster Squad. Look at Emma Stone on the back. That is, that's something. I don't know if you can see it. Next we have the only Die Hard movie in my collection. Live Free or Die Hard, named after, named after the state model of New Hampshire. Safe House, The Hitman's Bodyguard, two Ryan Reynolds films in a row, Speaking of Ryan's, La La Land, really fun movie, very, um, I guess you can call it magical. I don't know, I mean, I'm bi I'm, maybe I'm a little biased because I I'm into, I love Los Angeles personally, so I guess if I go back and watch this movie, like, yeah, that's where I want to be right now. It just makes me want to go on vacation, or just makes me want to, it makes me want to do something in life. That's... What, I mean, even if I'm not watching, I'm just thinking about, oh, wow, La La Land. That's an inspirational movie. Whiplash. This is Damien Chazelle's best film, if you ask me. It's also the first R-rated film I saw in the theater. Grand Piano. Uh, Damien Chazelle wrote this film, and it's autographed by, guess who? Elijah Wood. Frodo himself. All Eyes on Me. Ray, starring Jamie Foxx. Really good movie. One of the best of 2004. 
Exposed. Anna de Armas and Keanu Reeves. Wild, starring Reese Witherspoon. John Wick. John Wick Chapter 2. I think it's actually better than the first one. Like these John, The John Wick movies honestly get better with each installment, if you ask me. John Wick 3, Parabellum, a.k.a. John Wick 3, Prepare for War. Uh, a.k.a. John Wick 3, Prepare for the Absolute Best Experience of Your Life. So I, just, I saw that movie in Dolby Cinema. Wow, that is... It kicks your butt, that's all I can say. Overlord. I guess it would be good background noise. Moon, still in the plastic. The Simpsons movie. Don't! Also, I will say, one of my favorite jokes from this movie, one of my favorite jokes from this movie is the joke where Bart, like, comes uh, out from the top of the train and he has those Mickey Mouse ears on. Look, I'm a mascot from an equal corporation! And yet, like, t 12 years later, you're owned by it. You're owned by that evil mascot. <laughs> and they have, they still have that clip on Disney+, Plus, by the way, if you ever want to look it up. The Siege... The Rocky Horror Picture Show, Don't Breathe, good little movie, Two Guns, Kung Fu Panda, my favorite DreamWorks movie of all time, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, we're getting to the Spider-Man section right now, and that's my second favorite Spider-Man movie, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, my least favorite Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man, no, The Amazing Spider-Man, first Blu-ray I ever owned, by the way, it's the first one, Precious Memory. American Hustle, American Assassin. Uh, did I just say Assassin? American Assassin, The American, with George Clooney. Colossal, my favorite movie of 2017, even though someone probably argued this is a 2016 movie. I saw it in 2017 and it came out in my area in 2017, so I'm counting it as a 2017 movie. Although Blade Runner 20, 2049 might be my favorite of, that, of the year, so. Everest. I saw this for the first time recently. Not too bad, although I think the characters are a little forgettable. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Godzilla in 1954. Time Bandits. That is such a badass title. I love it. Uh, 12 Years a Slave. Saving Private Ryan. 12 Strong. Operation Finale. I think I'm covering the logo a little bit. Jarhead. Gods and Generals. Life of Pi. Marrowbone, Grudge Match. This was one of the last movies I saw before I did my top movies of 2010s countdowns I've seen before. The Fighter, Snitch, with, yeah, that's The Rock. I don't know why I had to look at that to verify it. Moving on to my DCEU collection, the Detective Comics Extended Universe, for those of you who don't know, which I imagine a lot of you watching will know. Shazam! That was a terrible impression. I'm trying not to wake anybody up. Aquaman. It's another steelbook. By the way, it's Shazam. I'll get this back up right here. These are both steelbooks. Let's put this down. I still need to get Birds of Prey, though. It's really... Okay. Attempt four. This is supposed to be attempt three, but unfortunately, attempt three was done on. Yeah, I don't. Even... I'm not too lazy to reach over there. I'm doing this again. Uh, so, I was going to shoot attempt three on another camera, which is sitting right over there. It's my Samsung ST150F, but it's terrible in low light. So we are going back to this Nikon after a full charge, and about almost 48 hours of waiting, and editing the rest of the video over there. So we're gonna. Continue where we left off. I reorganized all my movies just to present them the way I presented before because, let's face it, I just want this to be picture perfect. So, I'm weird. But weird is cool, so let's go with it. Justice League. Amazingly, this is getting a director's cut in 2021, the Zack Snyder's Justice League edition, hashtag release a Snyder cut. I was never really a part of that movement, but let's see another version of this movie come out. Wonder Woman, the steelbook that came out in 2017. This is my favorite of the DCEU movies. Gal Gadot, I think, was really good as Wonder Woman. Moving on. Up next we have Suicide Squad. I saw this in the theater and I had fun with it. But it's not as fun at home. I mean, I did watch the extended cut when I got it on 
Blu-ray, as you can see, it has the Seneca on the cover. Not so good, I'll be honest with you. I just didn't like the characters. Although Harley Quinn was kind of a scene stealer. I like Margot Robbie's performance. Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. This is a movie that gets better the more I think about it. I mean, yes, it has problems and it. Well, the theatrical cut does feel, even though it is two and a half hours, it does feel a little rushed. I mean, the action scenes are stellar. I, mean, I, think, I think Zack Snyder's direction is very well done here. And I think Ben Affleck plays a really good Batman. Speaking of Superman, you know, Man of Steel, the movie that started the DCEU. I wanted to see this in the theater, but unfortunately I missed it. But I watched it at home eventually. Seven Psychopaths. Hotel Artemis. Got that for Christmas one year. Moving on to... Robert Downey Jr. and The Judge. We're diving to my Kubrick collection right now. Kubrick, Cube, Kubrick, I don't care how you pronounce it. Full Metal Jacket. Clockwork Orange. Shining, Stephen King, you know, the writer of the book this movie's based on, hated this movie, believe it or not. It's not afraid to admit it. 2001 A Space Odyssey, this is the 4K edition. I also have the Blu-ray edition, but this also comes with a little envelope type thingy right here. It also has the 2001 logo on it, and it comes with postcards. It comes with a bunch of postcards, four of them. Pick a postcard, any postcard. Put this down, and it also comes with, well, like a gallery book or something like that. See all the images right here. Speaking of 2001, we have the Blu-ray edition of 2001 right here. This is a movie that you honestly had to watch before you die. 2010, The Year of May Contact. That's the sequel to 2001. American Made, starring Tom Cruise. We're diving into the Tom Cruise portion of the collection. Oblivion. Just watched this the other day. Pretty good movie, if you ask me. Although, some, some things are forgettable about it, if you ask me. Some, some of the things are forgettable about it, but still a pretty good movie. A Few Good Men. I have not seen this. It's still in the wrap. Minority Report. I'm going to be watching this pretty soon for a review. Directed by Steven Spielberg. Tom Cruise Triple, triple Feature with Collateral, Days of Thunder, and The Firm. Just watched Days of Thunder the other day. It's an alright movie. I guess. Risky Business. My favorite Tom Cruise movie of all time. Either that or Mission Impossible Follow. I can't decide. The Last Samurai. That's my favorite Tom Cruise performance, even though it's not my favorite Tom Cruise movie. All the Right Moves. This is my least favorite Tom Cruise movie. Iron Man: Mission Impossible 2. Just reviewed that, by the way. It's terrible. Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. I showed this in my previous video, and I'll show it in this one. Unfortunately, there's no DVD disc, but there's a Blu-ray disc. One of the two, and it's the one that makes me happy, so I don't care. Unless you get like a two TV, in which case, wah, wah, wah. Jack Reacher, the original. Let's move on. The Adjustment Bureau, starring Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. The Old Man and the Gun, with Robert Redford. This is his last role, as far as I'm aware. Pretty good movie. Rampage, Knives Out, great theater experience. I need to see this again on 4K Blu-ray. I got it at Walmart a few months back. Still have unwrap I still have yet to unwrap it. Makes me forget about the troubles of The Last Jedi, which that's not a good Star Wars movie if you ask me. Kick ass. Superman the movie. Uh, the Dead Don't Die. Judy, which is about Judy Garland. The Matrix Trilogy, aka Matrix, Matrix Reloaded, and Matrix Revolutions, all in 4K glory. Although there's no Animatrix, so if you want that, you're screwed. Bad times at El Royale. I've been at Target recently. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Starring Tom Hanks. Grand Budapest Hotel. Directed by Wes Anderson. Speaking of Wes Anderson, we have Fantastic Mr. Fox. And Wes Anderson's directorial debut, Bottle Rocket. Nice looking cover art. It's a Criterion as well. Speaking of Criterions, we have a Criterion for Netflix's Roma. I think this is the only Netflix movie I own on Blu-ray, because, well, Netflix doesn't really make physical media. 
Also, great theater experience, I will point that out too. I'm not sure if it's going to ever come back to theaters, but if it does, I will recommend going. Because I did see it in 70mm and it was great. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. We're beginning my Star Wars collection right now. This is the Best Buy exclusive steel book for Episode 9. Star Wars The Last Jedi. I just talked about this. Uh, it might be my second least favorite moving the franchise. Uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. I think that's... Yeah, I think I like that movie more than most people. I mean, yes, it is a carbon copy of A New Hope, but at the same time, it... It does it so, it does it so well that I almost consider it the best special edition of Episode Four. So that's just the way I look at it. I'm an optimist when it comes to this. Star Wars: Return of the Jedi. This is the 4K edition. I just picked this up recently. Empire Strikes Back on 4K. By the way, these are the Disney Plus slash 2011 Blu-ray editions, whatever they last were. This is Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, and I mentioned the Disney Plus edition. This has the McClunky scene with Greedo, if you are not familiar with that. It's where, well, before, you, you know that f infamous Han shoots first scene, or Han doesn't shoot first scene? Uh, Greedo gets a last word in before he dies. And speaking of which, we have the despecialized version of the Star Wars trilogy. Original trilogy, I should say. Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Really like that movie. Solo, a Star Wars story. This is still in the wrap, so that probably says what I need to say about it. Star Wars, the prequel trilogy on Blu-ray. This is episodes one through three. Patriot's Day. Really good. I really enjoy it in the theater. Lone Survivor. This is the first 4K I ever owned, by the way. But I still have yet to watch it for some reason. I don't know why. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Ties, aka Pirates of the Caribbean 4. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, a.k.a. Pirates of the Caribbean 3. Pirates of the Caribbean 2, Dead Man's Chest. Pirates of the Caribbean 1, The Curse of the Black Peril. I do not own Pirates of the Caribbean 5, a.k.a. Dead Man's Tunnel Tales. Still need to get it. And this one's a crack open. Yeah, it's a little bit ruined, unfortunately, but... Still got discs, so that's all that matters. But, anyways, this is the double feature... For Green Mile and Forrest Gump. Speaking of double features, we have the action double feature right here. This has Bloodsport and Time Cop. Cowboys and Aliens. Napoleon Dynamite. Fargo. Riddick. This is the complete collection which features Pitch Black, The Chronicles of Riddick, and Riddick. The Aviator, directed by Martin Scorsese. And starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Gladiator, starring Russell Crowe, directed by Ridley Scott. Last but not least, Braveheart. I really enjoyed this movie. Although I had to go through like one, two or three sittings to complete it all. That's the only downside of it. It's like a three hour movie and I will say I will be willing to sit through any movie no matter how long it is, but this is one of those movies where like I had to just I had to take a breather. And this is nothing against the movie. I mean, that's probably the only reason why I didn't give it like a perfect score. Because I had to sit down a couple of times to watch it to take it all in. Good movie, though. I really recommend it if you haven't seen it already. I mean, imagine a lot. Like, a good number of people already have. It's not 1995 anymore. It's 2020, even though it feels like so many years have passed since three months. And I'm going insane here. But you know what? It doesn't matter because I have all these movies to watch. And that makes me happy. So, that's the collection. I want to know, what is your favorite movie that I have shown in this collection? Is there a movie that you're mad at me for not having? Yeah, I don't have The Godfather. I don't have The Godfather 2. I don't have all the Rocky movies. I I already have a lot. But I am planning on doing more Blu-ray hunting as soon as more stores open. And I am shopping online a little bit more. I actually have a movie coming in tomorrow, Impractical Jokers in the Movie. But tomorrow might be the time that this video was uploaded. Maybe I'll show my picture of that when that comes out. So... To quote every infomercial ever. But wait, there's more! It's 3.57 in the morning and I forgot to talk about some other movies that are in my pile. And why is that? Because I'm an idiot who just... Yeah, I forget things. I forgot what I was going to say there. Well, I recorded a bunch of videos on the Samsung camera that is not going to be used for this video at all. And this is probably going to be the final stretch of the video. Let's do it. 
So we're going back in time. Up first we have Gold uh, with Matthew McConaughey. I have not seen this movie. Casablanca. Uh, this movie is a... I'm trying to remember, how old is it? 1942. Alright, 1942. Good to know. Gone with the Wind, 70th Anniversary Edition. This was just taken off HBO Max, but they're going to put it back on with a warning. Austin Powers Trilogy. The Hangover. Does Caesar live here? Hangover Part 2. You have The Monkey. Hangover Part 3. The House with Amy Poehler and Will Ferrell. Baywatch with Dwayne Rock Johnson. It's pretty stupid, honestly. Mortal Engines. This thing is falling onto slick cover. Let's move on. The Kid Would Be King. The Legends of The Legend of Hercules. Just plain awful. Don't watch that movie. Please don't. Avatar. Blu-ray 3D. Blu-ray and DVD. Good movie. Although I think it's a little overhyped. Escape Plan. It's Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dirty Run Scoundrels. This was just remade last year into The Hustle with, with Anne Hathaway and Rebel Wilson. Did not see that movie. And nor did I see this. Now You See Me. Now it disappeared. Trading Places, Norbit, and 48 Hours is part of a trouble feature with Eddie Murphy. The Birds, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Snatch, directed by Guy Ritchie. Uh, the Express, the... Uh, Ernie Davis story. I missed this up last time because I think I called it the Dennis Quaid story. Because, you know, Dennis Quaid is in it. Black Hawk Down. 127 Hours, which was partially spoiled if you've ever seen Deadpool. Battle of the Sexes. Good movie. Recommend it. Invitation Game with Amanda Cumberbatch. Body of Lies with Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe, directed by Ridley Scott. Sea Biscuit. Chasing Mavericks. 40 Days and 40 Nights. RBG. SWAT, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Dinner for Schmucks, Run Fat Boy Run, fun movie, Premium Rush, that's a good movie, In Time, haven't seen it, but I want to check it out. Last but not least, we have this pile over here. Let me just sort this out. First, that's an unfortunate movie. The Jesus Rolls. I did not see this movie yet. It's actually one of my recent pickups, and... This is a spin-off of the Big Lebowski, and I say this is unfortunate because look at this. This is probably one of my most damaged copies that I have. And it's not my fault. Uh, the There was a shipping issue. My my order got mixed with somebody else's, who, yeah, they live out of state. I'm not going to give any details, but they ordered a movie, and, I don't know, their package got mixed in with mine. It's kind of crazy. The Accountant on 4K with Starring Ben Affleck. Good movie. I just rewatched it recently. It's pretty good. King Arthur, The Legend of the Sword. Triple X. Uh, with Vin Diesel. Kind of good. It's a pretty good movie, if you ask me. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This is still in the wrap, although it's a Steven Spielberg movie that I wanted to check out at some point. And last but not certainly least, The November Man. This was a movie that I watched last year. It had like one or two good scenes. But overall, it's kind of disposable. Nothing really special about it. Well, that's all the Blu-rays in my collection. So, I hope this is—I hope this is fun, guys. So here's another look at the collection before we go. So, better view. There you have it. So, that's my Blu-ray collection, although, minus one thing right there. My name is Jack Drees. For those of you who are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe, you can leave this video a like if you want to see more. I am I am dedicated to elevator content, but I am willing to do more movie content if, if you like this sort of stuff. I do live streams, I do, I mentioned elevator videos. Occasionally I do a hotel tour, but there's no hotel to go to in this time. So, for all you tuning in, have a nice day. If it's if you're still watching during the COVID apocalypse, uh, best of luck to you. And that will be it.
Blu rays for life. Live long and prosper.